Welcome back to my kitchen. My plan this week is to talk about my little star, my starter, um, how I feed her, what she does, so that you can see her for yourself. But my first tip, and always my greatest tip maybe, is how much you keep. So this bowl obviously looks huge in the camera, but it's only 17 centimeters in diameter. And I only keep about 100 grams of starter. That is all that is in here, and that is all you need. You don't need liters and liters of starter. Just a base amount of 100 grams of starter. Uh, that's all I start with, and always feed the whole amount. You don't need to separate bits out. Just keep that same base amount and always feed the whole starter every time. So this is where we're going to begin. Lots of tips coming up. Hi, so continuing on with the tips about your starter. Here's my baby. So the next tip with your starter is to know that your starter is far more resilient than you may think. It really it does not need molly cuddling. It does not need taking on holiday with you. It does not need to go to a starter hotel if you go away. Um, once they're established, starters actually are quite hard to kill. As long as you keep it nice and safe, so keep its lid on, make sure you're feeding it good healthy flour, good healthy water uh, and looking after it, it's going to be absolutely fine. And it doesn't need feeding daily. Only brand new starters being made from scratch need to be fed daily. So it can live in your fridge when you're not using it, it can stay in your fridge for weeks and months without being used and it will be fine. So continuing on from the last tip only feed your starter to use it when you want to use it take it out of the fridge and feed it i always feed mine at room temperature because it's easier to mix and it will respond faster you can feed it cold it will just be stiffer and it will take longer to come up to play um, but only feed it when you want to use it so whether you want to make a loaf you want to make pancakes whatever it is you want to make with the starter feed it for that purpose you don't ever need to have discard. I never have discard. So if you feed it for the purpose, feed it for the amount that you need it to generate, you will never ever have any waste, which surely can only be a good thing. So feed it to use it every time. Our next tip is you don't need to chop and change the bowl that you keep it in or whatever you keep it in. I use bowls for mine because I think it's easier. It's easier to have access to the starter um, for mixing, for taking it in and out instead of a jar that you've got to deep dig deep in. I always prefer a bowl. But you don't need to change whatever vessel you keep your starter in unless it's getting mouldy and there's a problem. And then anyway, you'd probably need to replace your whole starter. But in between time, you do not need to chop and change what you keep it in. If there's crusty or dried starter around the edges, scrape it off and stir it in. It's all extra power, but you don't need to chop and change the bowl. Uh, next tip, before I go on to actually feeding my starter, um, when you are stirring your starter uh, or making your dough, any utensils that you use, wash them immediately or get them in some cold water. Otherwise, sourdough sticks like concrete. Um, and using clean stainless steel utensils is absolutely fine. Uh, it's a fallacy that you need to use only wooden things to stir, stir your starter. It's really not necessary. Personally, I don't use wood or plastic to stir any of my sourdough um, because they can take in flavours um, and leftovers from other food. So I use clean stainless steel implements to stir anything that I do with sourdough. But just make sure that you don't leave them hanging around and don't try and wash them in warm water because it will just cook the sourdough onto them. 